the news fuel hike pro tinubu protesters storm national assembly olaya manke olabo tokes demise shocking a career day community association uk sanctions wagner leaders linked to killings torture in africa Toby Amusan's world at least doping charges disturbing, says AFN. This is the MLC TV Global News, reaching you live from the city of Lukoja, the confluent state of Nigeria. I am Jennifer Udimayo. Thanks for joining us. The National Economic Council, NEC, led by Vice President Kashim Shatima, has instructed the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, to promptly distribute grains to states within a one to two week period. This directive aims to reduce the high prices of food items nationwide. The governor of Bauchi State, Bala Mohammed, disclosed the council's directive during a press briefing after the next meeting at the presidential villa Abuja. This action is expected to lower the prices of food items as these grains can be supplied at subsidized rates or sold to crush current market prices. Governor Mohammed emphasized that both state and local governments will play a significant role in the distribution process. According to Mohammed, the effort will also involve collaboration between NEMA and corresponding institutions at the state and local government levels to ensure the smooth distribution of grains. Protesters in support of the fuel remover has caused disruption at the National Assembly's main entrance, popularly known as Mopol Gate. The protesters noted that they decided to hit the street to show solidarity with the president, Bola Tinubu, over the removal of fuel subsidy. In response to the earlier hike in the price of petroleum from 537 naira per liter to 630 naira per liter, the convener of Stand Up Nigeria Sunday attested that the Tenumbu led administration has done the right thing and should be supported to deliver on the dividends of democracy. Atta added that President Bola Ahmed Tenumbu has shown that he has the integrity to use the funds for the development of the country and has announced a number of palliatives to cushion the effect of the increase in the fuel price. The Deputy Majority Leader of the Federal House of Representatives and member representing Ankpa, Omala and Olama Boro Federal Constituency of Kogi State, Abdullahi Ibrahim Halims, has moved a motion on the need for the federal government to construct 330 and 131 and 33 KVA X150 MVA to X60 MVA transmission substation at Aingba to improve electricity supply in Kogi East. In a motion move on the floor of the House, the House Deputy Leader notes that Kogi East is one of the strategic zones of the state as it shares a border with Enugu, Anambra, Edo, and Benue State. He also stated that Kogi East is the zone that houses quarry industries and other government institutions like Kogi State University, General and Zona Hospitals, Cassava Processing Mills, Commercial Banks, ETC. The need for a high stable power supply cannot be overemphasized. That Kogi East is the zone that houses quarry industries and other government institutions like Kogi State University, General and Zona Hospitals, Cassava Processing Mills, Commercial Banks, ETC. The need for a high stable power supply cannot be overemphasized. The National Economic Council, NEC, led by Vice President Kashim Shatima, has instructed the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, to promptly distribute grains to states within a one to two week period. This directive aims to reduce the high prices of food items nationwide. The governor of Bauchi State, Bala Mohammed, disclosed the council's directive during a press briefing after the next meeting at the presidential villa Abuja. This action is expected to lower the prices of food items as these grains can be supplied at subsidized rates or sold to crush current market prices. Governor Mohammed emphasized that both state and local governments will play a significant role in the distribution process. 
According to Muhammad, the effort will also involve collaboration between NEMA and corresponding institutions at the state and local government levels to ensure the smooth distribution of grains. The House of Representatives has seek to find a common ground in the bid by the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NAC, to seek approval to increase electricity tariff. The resolution followed a motion by the Deputy Minority Whip Ali Umadaki at the plenary in Abuja on Thursday. In his motion, he expressed concern over the suspense created by the planned increase in electricity tariff by distribution company Discos. Satomi Ahmed APC Bonu and Ali Issa JC PDP Gombe insisted that the burden of the subsidy removal on Nigerians was still huge to bear in addition to any tariff hike for electricity. Ahmed said there had been virtually no investment in infrastructure since the discourse took over distribution of power as communities are still procuring transformers in order to be connected. Adopting the motion, the House mandated its Committee on Power when constituted to interface with NEC with a view to finding a common ground to addressing the proposed hike in the interests of Nigerians. Kogi State Governor Yaya Beilu has applauded Major General David Madeyese Jemi Bewon retired for his significant contribution to the nation-building process. In a statement issued to celebrate the former military governor of Oyo State on the occasion of his 82nd birthday, Governor Yaya Bello acknowledged the profound impact Major General Jemi Bewon has had on various aspects of Nigerian governance and development. Bello noted that Jemi Bewon's unwavering commitment to the betterment of society demonstrated through his patriotic and selfless service during his military career, serves as an inspiration to both present and future generations of leaders. Furthermore, Governor Bello deeply appreciated General Jemi Bewon's tireless contribution to the development of Okun land in particular and Kogi State in general. He sent his prayers and well wishes, hoping for God's continuous blessings of good health and long life upon the elder statesman. In less than four months, Kogi state citizens will be at their polling units to elect the next governor who will take over from Yaya Belu. This next governorship tour will has caused different groups and individuals to begin to converse for their choices. In a press statement, an APC supporter group called Kogi All Support for Ododo and Joel declared their readiness to deliver. The group leader, Obadja David, said their objective as a group is to work for the success of the party which they had also demonstrated during the last general elections. They thank God for the success recorded and the unquantifiable contributions of Governor Yaya Belu. They assured the APC candidate to converse for votes for them in the November 11 governorship election. Our reporter has more. The group leader, Obadje David, calls on all citizens of Kogi to reject any candidate that is promoting tribal war amongst the people and appeals to security agencies to arrest those promoting hate speech. We should have gone far, far ahead. But because we're still living in the old age of thinking of tribe, this one is my brother, this one is not my brother. I see every Kogite as my brother and I see her as my sister. So we are saying that we want uh, the, a shift in the paradigm so that people will not be talking about the issue of tribe in this campaign. It can only fuel insecurity, and we, as a group, we are saying no to this. Not a, 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 a campaign team that is already telling me to my face that because I don't belong to a particular tribe, then I am not a Kogite. I am calling on every other tribe that is not being recognized. They should reject such a candidate vehemently, vehemently, with everything that such a person is not qualified because that, that such a person does not recognize our unity in diversity with a Kogi state is a mini Nigeria and should be treated as such. On this note, we, are all, we, are, we also want to appeal to security agencies to arrest all those that are promoting hate among our people. Anybody that is coming out of Kuman campaign and say, okay, vote for me because you are my brother, vote for me because I'm, so I belong to the tribe, according to security, because that is promoting it. And if we don't stem it, the elections will go, but the impact, the leftover of those 
our heads will not leave with the election. He said they have confidence that Ododo will consolidate on achievements recorded so far. Obaje promised to mobilize the electorate for votes. We have, we have confidence that the continuity will secure our democracy. Hence, the need to mobilize ourselves to vote en masse for the gubernatorial candidates of APC in Kogi State is sacrosanct. We, we are fully in support of the APC candidates, that is Ododo and Joel candidacy. He commended Governor Yaya Bello for infrastructural developments across the three central districts in the state. We are spoiled with the numerous growth and development of Governor Yaya Bello that cut across the three central districts in the state. That is not saying that, okay, this one is not my central district and that they are therefore I'm not taking development to such a central district. That he made the development to come to every central district and especially in the area of security, education, health, roads, construction and reconstruction. Harmonious relationship among the three arms of government, women, inclusiveness and youth empowerment. Equitable distribution of appointments among the three central districts to mention but a few. So we as a group, we appreciate that. I will believe that if there is continuity in the governance of the state, definitely the one that will be achieved by the current administration can now be further you know, uh, 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 stepped up by uh, the Ododo Joel uh, candidacy. The group called on Governor Bello to consider putting forward an executive bill that will mandate the rotation of the governorship position amongst the three senatorial districts before he hands it over to the next government. We equally wish to appeal to His Excellency Alanya Yabelo to consider putting forward an executive bill that will mandate rotation of the governorship seat position among the three central districts. We are going to submit our own proposal to the to His Excellency and we will call it submit to the uh, 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 State House of Assembly. That's this culture, we, while we are in the university, we had that culture in the school where the three central districts uh, inter rotate uh, positions of uh, NACOS, then, as well as you know, of Kogi State students. And it was very, going smoothly. I will see a liberal lady as my own sister. I will see an Oworo. I can remember when there's a guy from the uh, uh, Oworo. And for some of us, uh, you know, then he was even the one that made me to understand that there's a tribe called Oworo in uh, Kogi State. Because the way we're so close, and it's very urban name. So I was classifying means as open. But because the way we took us ourselves as brothers on campus, it made me to know no, they are all tried is still a war. So I believe that if the, um, um, uh, our Excellency, His Excellency, uh, Governor Yabino can help us to f uh, push this bill to ensure that there will be rotation of governorship seats in the state among the three central districts, it will go a long way to foster harmony, unity, and will, nobody will be suspecting anybody of how play. Nobody will be thinking that, oh, this one wants to cheat me, this one wants to feel superior be, uh, above me, this one is claiming that he's more cogite than I am. Among those who spoke during the briefery are Siaka Fatima and Musa Zainab, who call for inclusion of more women in government in the next dispensation and added that without women, no election. They won against Togri before, during the campaign and after the election. Women have 90% of the election, but at the end of the day, they were left up down without achieving anything. I myself, I know I have worked for Yayabelu and I know what I passed through, but thank God today, I'm still standing. For it's my state, and I will stand for Ododo. We all should ensure tribalism in Kogi State. We want a, in a situation whereby women will be more at peace, our youth will be more empowered, our children will be more educated, our uh, um, our state will be more peaceful. You know, when we promote the uh, the politics of veganism, the politics of um, religion, bagos or tribalism, it will it will go uh, it will help our children. They encourage all citizens of Kogi to come out in large numbers to vote for Usma Ododo. I am Faith Abdugafa reporting for MSC TV. Drug abuse is both a global health and social problem with distinct conditions and problems that vary from place to place. Around 275 million people use drugs worldwide in the last year while over 36 million people suffered from drug use disorder, according to the World Drug Report, released by the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime 
UNODC in 2021. In Nigeria, national drug use survey revealed in the previous year that there were around 14.3 million drug users, of which close to 3 million suffered from a drug use disorder. Drug abusers have also been linked to why the nation records crime daily. These are many more uh, reasons why the MLC TV met with a pharmacist, Grace Uluwatobi, in the quest to know how the situation can be managed, if not ameliorated. Our reporter has more. Substance abuse is a serious issue, a global and international issue, particularly in developing countries like Nigeria. Pharmacist Grace Olorun Tobi Folorun Shaw explained that drug abuse is an aggravating factor for the economic crisis, adding that youth are supposed to be the major agent of change and development, some of whom have been destroyed by drug abuse and rendering them unproductive in the society. The burden of drug abuse in Nigeria has become a major concern, health concerns, because we are having a lot of people that are having um, um, drug abuse disorder. So I think that the state is actually not very good, it's on the increase. Okay. She emphasized that 15% of the adult population in Nigeria between the ages of 25 to 39 are victims of drug abuse. The drug don't longer, don't longer work the way it should work, it becomes insensitive, and then they now keep on increasing the doses, they are not getting their result. And that increase of dose eventually make them to become dependent, to be psychologically dependent on those drugs and also it eventually leads to the um, dependence eventually leads to addiction and that's how it becomes a problem. So the advice to the government would be that firstly the government can help to curb these things by um, increasing opportunities to the youths because a lot of people that have gone into drug abuse do not go into it because voluntarily they are just trying to swallow up the pain and frustration of not having something tangible doing. So when opportunities are available for the youth, which are predominantly implicated in this drug abuse, it will help to reduce the it will help to reduce the menace. And also, drugs um, governments can also pro allocate funds to drug-related agencies. We have NGOs, we have um, um, outreaches that can be done to be able to educate people on that so the government can help in that way and also um, um, parents can go a long way in helping to reduce drug abuse. Speaking for the pharmacist Fulorun Shaw explained the difference between drug abuse and the misuse of drugs. Drug misuse has to do with prescription drugs when drugs are being prescribed. Drugs that are being prescribed are not used the way they ought to be used. It can be that my friend has this particular concern and the doctor prescribed this, so you use this. Or there are some even cases where you dispense drugs, as we as pharmacists so dispense drugs to patients and I'm like one daily, I'm like one daily, this is not going to work and they get to use two daily. That's misuse of drugs. Or they decide to use it whenever they feel like, like there are some drugs that are drowsy. We specifically tell them that these drugs, you are going to use them when you are about to sleep. If you are going to be operating heavy machines, you don't use them at such times. So when you don't use them when you are supposed to use them, or not the way it is prescribed, that's what misuse of drug is. I'm the pharmacist said the abuse, on the other hand, is the intentional misuse of drugs to achieve an outcome such as getting high or escaping reality, adding that both are dangerous and deadly to individuals. Jennifer Odimayo reporting for MLC TV. We'll go on a short break. We'll be right back. Do you know women are adventurous, ambitious, captivating, confident, and dazzling? Do you know she's also dynamic, enigmatic, inspiring, and self-assured? Those are not all about who a woman is. She's also blessed with the wisdom to design her world. She is optimistic when she puts her mind to do anything, malleable and astute. And to crown it all, she is naive because of her total belief in anything she loves and same time noble with her character. These and many more about a woman are what we discuss in Analyze on Women's World, a program that celebrates women who have put all these attributes together.
to add value to their society. Be my guest together to tell your story yourself. I am a woman and I am proud to be. Join Faith Abdul Ghaffar only on MLC TV online by 6 p.m. every Sunday for all encompassing about who a woman is. For your contribution, comments, even to appear on the show, I thought placement and sponsorship. Please call any of the numbers displayed on the screen. Visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Molokai TV, and like our Facebook pages, MLC TV and MLC TV WW to watch our editions. Thank you. Welcome back. On politics, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has denied the allegation of deducting 2.5 million votes from the scores obtained by the Labour Party LP presidential candidate in the 2023 election, Peter Obi. INEC made the denial in its final address to the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal in the case by OB and his party challenging the final outcome of the 2023 presidential election as declared by the Commission. However, in their final written address dated July 14th, INEC's lead counsel A.B. Mahmoud San said OB failed to provide credible evidence to back his claim and therefore asked the court to dismiss the petition. Mahmoud added that OB's witness failed to tender before the Pepsi, the polling unit result he used in writing his report leading to claims of a deduction. On security and crime, the Nigerian police force Lagos State Command on Thursday arranged charity Irakazi 28 at an Ikeja magistrate court for allegedly having in her possession 36 berets with IPOB insignia on them. The defendant, a woman, an artisan who resides in Lagos, has been tried for conspiracy and unlawful possession of indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, berets against the law. The prosecutor, Inspector Samuel Michozunu, who told the court that the offenses were committed on June at Masala Sea Bus Stop Satellite Lagos, intercepted a rider carrying a big black nylon on his motorcycle. He said that the rider was carrying 36 pieces of colored beret green and red beret with IPOB engraved on it. The offenses, according to the prosecutor, contravened the criminal law of Lagos State 2015. The defendant, however, pleaded not guilty at the charges. The magistrate for Lashade Hodges granted the defendant bail for 50,000 naira with one surety in like sum. Hodges adjourned the case until August 2nd for mention. The Nigerian army has inaugurated the newly crafted metal sculpture of the 12th Brigade mascot at the headquarters of the 12th Brigade Nigerian Army Cantonment Lokoja. Speaking at the commissioning on the parade ground in Lokoja, Brigadier General Isang Akbomontia, the outgoing commander of the brigade, emphasized that the need to turn the barrack into a more beautiful place inspired the creation of a mascot representing a fearless, powerful, an intimidating tiger. Akpa Montia said the idea for the mascot came from a young cop member who proposed her concept and with the help of his engineer officers, the project has been completed for commissioning to the glory of God. The commander expressed his gratitude to everyone involved for their support in making the project a reality within a short period. Brigadier General Aquamontia specifically thanked the Chief of Army Staff COAS for granting him the opportunity to serve as the commander of the 12th Brigade. Newly appointed Commissioner of Police Kogi State Command CP Onuoha Bertrand has assumed duty at the command. A statement issued by the Police Public Relations Officer Kogi State Police Command SP Williams Ovie Aya indicated that the new commissioner of police took over from CP Akim A. Yusuf, who was earlier redeployed to research and development force headquarters Abuja. According to the statement, over the last three decades, CP Onoha attended several tactical leadership courses, including advanced detective course, ADC, intermediate command course, ICC, PSCJ 2007, strategic leadership and command course, SLCC 2019 PSCJ. 
The new CP hails from Abo Umboise, local government area of Imo State. He holds a BA, Honors in History, Sociology, University of Ife, and MA, International Relations, Ibadan. He was enlisted into Nigerian police force in the year 1992 as a cadet assistant superintendent of police. On the foreign scene, the UK announced sanctions against 13 individuals and businesses linked to the Wagner Group, accusing them of executions and torture in Mali and CAR and threats to peace and security in Sudan. They include the heads of Wigner's operation in Mali, Ivan Aleksandrovich Maslov, and in CAR, Konstantin Aleksandrovich Pikalov. Wigner fighters are also accused by the U.S. of enriching themselves with illicit gold deals on the continent. Head of the Wigner mercenary group, Yevgeny Prigozhin, has said his men will continue to fight in African countries where they are already present. Prigozin told Afric Media TV that there was no and there will be no reduction in their programs in Africa. BBC Verify has analyzed the audio and confirmed it was Prigozin's voice. Let's join Joy Dada for the entertainment news. Welcome to our entertainment segment. I am Joy Dada. In Africa, the visuals of David Music Worldwide DMW Logos Oloris new single Jayelo has been welcomed with huge criticisms, especially by Muslims who consider the content offensive and disrespectful to their religion. Reports that the new DMW artist released his debut single under the label. Following the release, DMW boss Davido took to Twitter to share a short clip of the music video which captured people praying and dancing in front of a mosque as he urged fans to stream the song. However, his tweet didn't sit well with Muslim faithful who immediately asked him to take down the video and tender an apology as the content of the video was offensive to the Islamic religion. And on foreign scene, American reality star Kim Kardashian has revealed she used to be a footballer player. According to her, she played as a goalkeeper and sent her forward for six years before quitting. She said she wasn't good at football but loved the game. King stated this on the sideline of the Inter Miami vs. Cruz Azul League Cup match at the DRV PNK Stadium. The reality star and her children were among the high-profile celebrities who were in attendance to watch Lionel Messi debut for Major League Soccer Club, Inter Miami. Thanks for joining me. I am Joy Dada reporting for MLC TV. Thank you, Joy. A Kiria the Community Development Association has expressed shock over the death of Chief Olaya Michael Olabatoke. Olabatoke, who held the traditional title of Otumba Atuluse of Ekinria, they died on Wednesday. The National Publicity Secretary of EACDA, Adekanye Victor Adewale, described the Olabatoke as a complete lover of land. The National Leadership of Ekinria, the Community Development Association, on behalf of His Royal Majesty Olu Antoni Bami Baye, Idowu ACA, CON, Ahe Maworo one the Olu Ade of Ekinri Ade, Ekinri Ade Traditional Council. The Olu Ade in council and the good people of the community express their heartfelt condolences to the family, friends, associates, and good people of our land on the demise of their illustrious son, Chief Olaya Maike Olobatoke, which came as a rude shock. And that is the size of our package. Keep supporting us by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Malakai TV. Like and follow our Facebook pages, MLC TV, MLC TV 2, MLC TV Yoruba, and Ibera Vabe, MLC TV. Instagram, MLC TV 2021. Twitter, Malakai TV. And TikTok, Malakai underscore TV. For your event coverage, 
appearance on any of our programs, contributions, comments, advert placement, or sponsorship. Please call or send SMS to any of our numbers displayed on your screen. Join Malakai TV online on weekends to watch our various programs. Saturday, 7 p.m. Political Arena. Sunday, 6 p.m. Women's World. And Monday, 9 a.m. The Opinion. It is Malakai TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. Please be your brother's keeper to build a happier and better society together. I am Jennifer Odimayo. Thanks for watching and do have a lovely weekend.